going on? Welcome back to the channel. So we're going to talk a little bit about our dyno session last week at Strictly Performance. Um, good learnings, a great time, a great shop. So if you saw the video, there was a lot of discussion around older software, the dyno jets and the correction of 12%. So the new software, the WinPEP software that they're using, which is the latest, it's WinPEP 8 makes that correction. So in other words, um, it will run dead on to a calibrated Mustang dynamometer. They also confirmed several times they have taken uh, factory cars with a known horsepower at the engine. They will dyno them. And if it's a stick car, they'll get 85% of that horsepower. If it's an automatic, they will get 80% of the horsepower. Whatever your dyno results are, you divide by whether it, if it's a stick car, you divide by 0.85 to get your total. So you're taking your 15% loss, parasitic loss, subtract that from 100, you have 85%. So when you apply the math, you take your total dyno result divided by 0.85 to get your estimated engine horsepower. Um, They've done it several times on new cars and they say it's dead on. We ran three dynos for the Mustang and my numbers were dead on almost of the Mustang dynamometer. Our first run, we'll take a look at the graphs. All right, again, this is difficult. We're doing this through the phone. Hopefully you can see it just fine. So I wanna make note right here also, this run file this was the first run file. So you can see it's WP8, which is WinPEP 8. That is the latest software DinoJets are using. And what DinoJets have done, they standardized the industry. You go to any DinoJet running the WinPEP software 8, it has to be number 8, which is the latest. You will run the same number on that dyno if it's in Chicago. I'm testing in Kalamazoo on a DinoJet with the WinPEP 8 software, you'll run the same numbers. Now the other software that's running the WinPEP number seven, that's the one with the inflated numbers by 12%. All right, so here we got the very first run. We got a rear wheel horsepower of 442.38. We ran it to uh, 7,600 RPM. The torque was respectable, 379.57. So the second run was a few minutes later. We ran a 446.42 at 7,500 RPM and a max torque, a 384. Of course, that was at the same RPM. So we'll look at the RPM numbers. Um, they're all close. I asked them to run to 76. This red one was ran to 78. So we let it cool down for a while. In fact, quite a while because they had a little bit of an issue with the uh, computer reading. Once they got that issue fixed, we went back up. We ran it out to 7800. That's where my red line is set at. We pulled a 448.51. Now the Mustang diameter, I got a 449 and some change. Those are almost dead on together. The max torque looked really good. It was a 390 and some change uh, at the rear wheels. So let's take a look at this graph again. Power starts coming in 2500. And you can see for the torque, it's right around 350, it starts building. And well, let's just look at the red one. That's since that's the best one, we'll take a look at that one. Anyways, builds right up. That's where we max it at, right there, at 390. And that's gonna be right around, looks like it's right about in the center, right around 52, 5300 RPM. So that's interesting because in stock form, max torque on the engine, now this is on the engine, it's 380 at 4,400 RPM. So with all these modifications we did, including the port on the intake, 
It really woke this car up. Starts to drop off after your 5200 RPM, and as you can see, it just slowly goes down. But that torque curve is really nice. This is what you want to see. You want to see an almost flat torque curve. If you can pull a flat torque curve all the way through your band, um, you're making power. Horsepower is going to kick in and start taking over. As you can see, this graph, horsepower starts to build, and it just continues to build all the way up through the RPM range. And where it ends, uh, it didn't make any more as far as uh, much more horsepower. As you can see, the line just kind of flattens out. And that's where the boss intake basically stops working, right about there. As you can see, 77, 7,800 RPM. Now, if the Cobra Jet intake was on, that's supposed to make power up, but honestly, I'm not interested in going there. Um, our boss intake is making good torque down low, so we're gonna keep that on there. We're not gonna go down that road. We're gonna keep it all boss parts. As you can see, here's a graph where it just kind of ended up right about 7,800 RPM. I'm pretty happy with those results. It's a good run. Hope you guys can see that. So that's what I wanted to share with my viewers. So I'm gonna break the news. No, I'm not getting turbocharged. No, I'm not getting uh, supercharged either. But uh, did some digging and um, I wanna say if you've been watching my videos, one of my goals, of course, is to build a badass Boss 302, naturally aspirated, using Boss parts, and not just, just making it badass, but having a reliable car that we can go out and have fun with. It's still fast, go out and beat some big blocks, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, that's, that's my goal, get this car to hook up. But anyways, go out and have some fun in the street, have some fun into track, make it a good road car, and reliable. It's one of the baddest Mustangs Ford's ever produced. So what I want to say to you guys, the other thing I was chasing, and I said that the boss can run with the 2018 and 2019 Mustangs. Well, it may. I'm going to break the news, and I'm a little disappointed, but it's good to know. I want my viewers to know. And I don't think this is common knowledge. Ford did not... Uh, wasn't forthcoming with this information. I found this information strictly by looking into Ford dealerships to supply parts, just trying to understand the 2018, 2019 Gen 3 engines a little bit more. Here's what I found. One of the reasons why them cars are so bad and they make so much horsepower. Now I will throw a few clips in. Now I went <laughs> because I was a big fan of Sting Mo and still am, and Xander 13. I watched those guys when I bought this car. I started searching stuff on it and then I started watching videos. And uh, anyways, basically you can build 100 horsepower with full bolt-ons and adding E85 over your stock numbers. I truly believe I'm close to uh, 540 horsepower. Um, as soon as we can get the lighter rear wheels on, we get a 461, 462 dyno number, do the math, uh, divide by 0.85, we get uh, 544, five, somewhere, somewhere around there. Right now, it's at 526 at the 449 rear wheel horsepower. So I went and dug up Xander's old video, and it's legit, truly legit. He pulled a 495 rear wheel horsepower um that's a lot that's why it made 400 and almost 96 horsepower but man all right let's let it cool we'll do another one see if it improves if not we know it's consistent and i'm solid it's it's i'm happy wait till we have the full corsa axle back mated with the rest of four full four one here we go cross our fingers come on baby 500 
Boss will make 580 with a good tune. Of course, E85 and the Boss Racing Cams. So as I dug into parts, in your part supply, the parts are all spec'd. And they will tell you what's interchangeable. So what I found, the Gen 2 motors, I believe have the same valve size as a Boss 302. They were upped from the Gen 1. Um, and the cams are also 263 duration, but both intake exhaust and 13 millimeter lift. Gen 1, Gen 2, both are maxed at 13 millimeter. That's 514 thousandths lift, um, if you want to look at it that way. However, the Boss Racing Cam is, is the same as a Gen 2 intake, 263 duration, uh, 13 millimeter lift. The exhaust cam is going to be more, which we are putting in later. What I found on the valve size for the Gen 3, which I don't know what it is because there's no numbers. Those valves are only interchangeable with the Gen 3 engines, 2018, 2019. Here's the kicker, guys. Here's what I found. Guess what cams are in the Gen 3, the GT350 cams. 14 millimeter lift, which is about 550 thousandths lift. Don't know the duration of the GT350. It's using those cams. When you pull a cam part on a 2018 shows you what it's interchangeable with. It's interchangeable with all your 2018, 2019 Mustangs or the whole line of, of Ford trucks that put the five liters in and the GT350. So that means they're using the same cams as the GT350. So what Ford didn't tell us, on top of the 12.0 uh, compression up from 1, from the Gen 1, Gen 2, because those are 11.0, the direct and port injection, the bigger intake, they never mentioned uh, the cams, and they never mentioned an increase in valve size. That's why those engines are running like hell. So we're going to move on from trying to chase down those cars. If I can still run high tens with this car, I'll be doing damn good. That's my goal. So guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and uh, have a great evening. Take care. Oh. Mm -hmm.